Imagine a world where words, not weapons, can inflict deep wounds. A world where whispers can destroy reputations, shatter dreams, and break hearts. This is not a dystopian fantasy, it's the reality we live in, poisoned by the silent killer backbiting. We've all felt the sting of unkind words spoken behind our backs, the betrayal, the anger, the helplessness. But have we ever stopped to consider the profound impact our own words might have on others? Backbiting, the act of speaking ill of someone in their absence, is a pervasive problem that affects us all. It's easy to dismiss backbiting as harmless gossip, but the truth is far more insidious. Like a slow-acting poison, it seeps into our lives, eroding trust, destroying relationships and leaving behind a trail of pain and resentment. It's time we expose this destructive behavior for what it is and commit to creating a world where words are used to uplift, not to tear down. This isn't about being nice or avoiding difficult conversations. It's about recognizing the power of our words and choosing to use them responsibly. It's about creating a culture of respect, empathy and open communication. It's about building each other up, not tearing each other down. Backbiting is often disguised as harmless chatter, a way to bond with others or share a juicy tidbit. We might convince ourselves we're just venting or concerned, but the truth is backbiting always carries a sting. It's a cowardly act, often fueled by envy, insecurity, or a desire for attention. Think about it. Would you say the same things to someone's face as you would behind their back? If the answer is no, you're engaging in backbiting. It's time to face the hard truth. Backbiting is a form of relational aggression, plain and simple. It's easy to get caught up in the moment, to feel a sense of camaraderie when we join in on gossiping about someone else. But we need to ask ourselves, at what cost? Are we willing to sacrifice someone else's well-being for a fleeting moment of connection or amusement? Remember, every time we engage in backbiting, we contribute to a culture of negativity and distrust. We become part of the problem, not the solution. Imagine a young promising employee, Sarah, working tirelessly to climb the corporate ladder. One day, a rumor starts circulating about her personal life, completely fabricated and malicious. Despite her hard work and dedication, the rumor spreads like wildfire, poisoning the minds of her colleagues and superiors. Sarah's reputation is tarnished, her career stalled. She feels betrayed, isolated, and deeply hurt. This is just one example of how backbiting can have real-life consequences. A friendship can be shattered by rumors spread about one friend to another. A family can be torn apart by malicious whispers and secrets shared behind closed doors. The emotional toll on the victims of backbiting is immeasurable. It can lead to feelings of anxiety, depression, isolation, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. The wounds inflicted by backbiting may not be visible, but they are deep and long-lasting. Section 4. Why we backbite unraveling the roots of gossip. To combat backbiting, you know, we need to understand the motivations behind it. Often it stems from our own insecurities and shortcomings. When we feel inadequate, we may try to elevate ourselves by putting others down. Jealousy is another powerful motivator. We may speak ill of someone who possesses something we desire, success, talent, relationships, or material possessions. This stems from a scarcity mindset, believing there's not enough good to go around. Sometimes backbiting is a way to seek attention or validation. By sharing gossip, we become the center of attention, even if it's for all the wrong reasons. We crave the validation and sense of belonging that comes with being in the know. Insecurity can also drive us to backbite. When we feel threatened or insecure, we may lash out at others to protect our own fragile egos. This is especially true in competitive environments, where we may view others as obstacles to our own success. Understanding the root causes of backbiting is crucial to addressing the issue. We need to be honest with ourselves about our own motivations and work to develop healthier coping mechanisms for dealing with negative emotions. Section 5. The Ripple Effect. How backbiting spreads its venom. Backbiting is not a victimless crime. Its poison spreads far and wide, contaminating everything it touches. The most immediate casualty is trust. When we discover someone has been speaking ill of us behind our backs, it shatters our trust in them. This breach of trust can be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to repair. It creates an atmosphere of suspicion and doubt, making it challenging to rebuild healthy, supportive relationships. 
This erosion of trust extends beyond the individuals involved. When backbiting becomes commonplace in a workplace, school or community, it creates a toxic environment where everyone feels unsafe and vulnerable. People become afraid to speak their minds or trust anyone, stifling creativity, collaboration and innovation. The damage to reputations can be irreparable. Once a rumour is spread, it takes on a life of its own, often amplified and distorted through social media and word of mouth. Even if the rumours are later proven false, the damage is done.